medcram.com. Well, welcome to another Medcram Monkeypox update. Today, we're going to talk about cases, but also a major update and some investigative reporting out of the Atlantic that's been looking at what's been going on in Nigeria for the last five years, and also some very interesting breaking news on the mutations in the monkeypox virus. But before we begin, remember to join us at medcram.com where you can see all of these updates and also our continuing medical education series on a number of topics. Join us at medcram.com. So this is the current situation with daily new cases of monkeypox. And we can similarly see the seven-day rolling average of new cases worldwide. And this is the breakdown of specific countries with confirmed and suspected cases. In some countries, you need to have an actual sequencing of the genome to confirm the case. But if the test is only positive for orthopox virus, which is the family monkeypox virus is a part of, then that's known as a suspected case. If we group confirmed and suspected cases together, you'll see that this is the order of current cases, both confirmed and suspected. And if you want to follow along here, we'll also put a link to the BNO news tracking on monkeypox in the description below. Of course, because of the monkey pox outbreak that has been discovered recently, there's been more interest in what actually has been going on in Africa, and more attention has been paid to the genetic sequencing of these monkey pox viral genomes. This paper was looking at specific genomes, and what they found in monkey pox genomes that were evaluated in 2021 and 2022 Three out of the 10 that were analyzed had distinct and different genomes. Of course, they were all related to each other, but as the title indicates, at least two separate monkeypox outbreaks were underway, suggesting wider spread. And of course, we'll put a link in the description below. But I want to spend some time reviewing this article that appeared in The Atlantic by Sarah Zhang, titled, We Should Have Seen Monkeypox Coming. Five years ago, monkeypox made a leap, and most of the world ignored it. And of course, we'll put a link to this article in the description below as well. But let's go over exactly what it is that they found, because the results are a bit disturbing. So as most of you already know, there are two different variants or clads of monkeypox. There is the more severe Congo Basin, which has about a 10% mortality. And there is the West African, which has about a 1% mortality. If we look specifically at the country of Nigeria, they did not see a case of monkeypox until recently, since 1978. And then, all of a sudden, in 2017, there was a case of an 11-year-old who was confirmed to have monkeypox. Since that time, and up until 2022, there have been 500 cases. And as the report points out, the thing that was different about these 500 cases that was different than the cases that they had prior to 1978 is that these were primarily spread through sexual contact with men. Essentially, men who had sex with men. Now, during this time, there were cases that were popping up in places like Israel, in the UK, and also in Singapore. But all of these had connections with people who had traveled from the endemic area of Nigeria in this case. So why all of a sudden would this somehow just pop up in 2017? Well, scientists decided to look at that. One of the things you have to understand is that monkeypox is a DNA virus. And as such, DNA viruses, generally speaking, with some exceptions, don't mutate as much as RNA viruses. In fact, if you look at the mutation rates that are generally understood to happen in this type of a virus, It's usually one to two base pairs per year. Well, when scientists started to look at the mutation rate from 2017 to 2022 in these Nigerian monkeypox cases, it skyrocketed to about 47 per year. Furthermore, these did not appear to be random mutations. These were very specific mutations. In fact, most of the mutations involved a base pair going from a thymine and cytosine to a thymine and another thymine. Or the other one was going from a guanine and adenine to a adenine and an adenine. 
So why would there all of a sudden be a much higher mutation rate, many more cases, and these types of mutations specifically? Well, as the Atlantic article points out, there's a very specific, innate immune system mechanism that I was unaware of, where there's actually a protein in the host that purposefully puts mutations into the genome of the virus. Enter this paper that was published in PLUS Pathogens, and the lead author is Dr. Nicholas Gillette, who is a professor at the University of Namur in Belgium. And he talks about this very interesting factor in the host innate immune system known as apoprotein B mRNA editing enzyme catalytic subunit 3A or A3S, or for short, APOBEC3. And according to the abstract, it says that the APOBEC3 enzymes are innate immune effectors that introduce mutations into viral genomes. These enzymes are cytidine deaminases, which transform cytosine into uracil. They preferentially mutate cytidine preceded by thymidine, making the 5' prime TC motive their favored target. And so what essentially may be going on here, as the article points out, is that these mutations may simply be the result of battle scars, if you will, of this virus going through a reservoir of a population of either animals or humans that is perpetrating on its genome the very process or mechanism that we just described here. In other words, it's unclear whether or not these mutations are conferring on the virus any extra abilities. Now, it could be that these 500 cases, the reservoir could be humans, or it could also be primates, or rodents, or even rabbits. We're not sure of the reservoir. We're not sure what the virus is infecting that is causing it to accumulate so many of these mutations. What is clear is that since 2017, when this has been happening, we kind of missed the boat here on trying to figure out what was going on and getting this under control. And so it doesn't seem much of a surprise that if this virus, which was having an outbreak in Nigeria, is spread specifically by men having sex with men, and it occasionally showing up in Israel, UK, and Singapore, it doesn't require a leap of faith to understand how this type of virus could spread very rapidly where there is a gathering where sexual encounters between participants is happening frequently. Now, I wanted to make clear that in the West African variant, where there is a relatively low mortality, there has not been any deaths reported so far in this outbreak. However, what is concerning is that at the same time that this was happening in West Africa and specifically Nigeria, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, which has the more virulent version of the virus, the more virulent clade, if you will, as this has been going on, there have been 1,200 cases, and in that cohort, there's been reported 58 deaths. Now, you may be interested to know that we actually have a vaccine for monkeypox because monkeypox is so closely related to smallpox that the smallpox vaccines are actually effective against monkeypox. And currently, you need to know that there are two versions of the smallpox vaccine specifically ACAM2000 and Genios. Now, both of these are live viruses, but the virus is not monkeypox or smallpox, but instead it's vaccinia, which is cowpox. And this is actually where we get the name for vaccine. It's from Latin from cow, because it was the cowpox that actually vaccinated people very early on against smallpox. And in fact, smallpox was eliminated because of this cowpox vaccine. However, the major differences between ACAM2000, which the United States has over 100 million doses, and unfortunately, it is a virus that replicates and it can cause a pox at the site of injection. So therefore, there's a, quote, take that occurs. You have to protect people from that because it is contagious. You can actually spread that virus by exposing people to the pox at the site of the injection. And as you can see here, there is a myopericarditis risk in 5.7 in 1,000 primary vaccinees. There is risk factors here for the ACAM2000. Just recently, there is a new smallpox vaccine called Genios, which is a replication-deficient modified vaccinia Ankara, which means that it does not replicate. There is no take, and there is expected to be less risks with this type of vaccine. 
The benefit with this is that you can't transmit it to another person because there is no take, there is no pox. The disadvantage with Genios is that it needs to be given in two doses, whereas the ACAM 2000 is only a single dose. Now, in terms of the stockpile that the United States has, they just purchased 13 million doses of Genios, and so it's not going to be as common as ACAM 2000. And we covered this and also therapeutic medications in our first monkeypox update, so please reference that video for more information. And of course, we'll put a link to this YouTube video in the description below. It seems as though we've known, or at least some people have known for the last five years, that this type of monkeypox clade that is endemic now in West Africa and specifically Nigeria since 2017 spreads with certain behavior. And that would imply that certain precautions need to be taken. It's unclear to me whether or not condoms would prevent this type of spread because unlike HIV, which spreads through bodily fluids and semen specifically, monkeypox spreads through the transmission of open sores even in contact with clothing or sheets that were in contact with people that were infected with monkeypox. So it seems as though we have more questions than answers at this point. But this article does shed some light on the current situation, and I want to thank Sarah Zhang over the Atlantic for sharing this information with the rest of the world. I'd like to hear your comments down below. Thanks for joining us.